Hey guys, Joey Shanks here once again, and we're gonna be dealing with 35 millimeter movie cameras. Now we've done Super 8, we've done 16 millimeter, and now it's time to do 35 millimeter, something I've been looking forward to very much. Now I tried to find the most reasonable camera I could online, and I came up with this guy, the Convas 1M. This is a Russian camera made in the late 50s. It was actually the first camera that was taken into space shot on 35 millimeter film. Now this isn't the only option you can go with. There's a few other options that are in the same price range, like the Mitchell 35 millimeter camera. There's a Bell and Howell 35 millimeter camera. There's an Aeroflex Eclair. You may have seen photos with Stanley Kubrick holding one of these. It's a really sweet looking camera. This is probably gonna be a two part episode where we're gonna go over the basics of this camera. And then in the second episode, we're gonna go into some DIY hacks of getting a power source to this so you don't have to use the hang crank. So let's get to it and start breaking down the Convos 1M 35mm camera. This is the 1M, so it's like the first generation. It comes with a three lens turret. One inexpensive movie camera takes one, two, three kinds of movies. You lift this guy up, kind of turns like that. Obviously we need a lens that's going to fit this ring here, and this is called an OCT-18. OCT when I purchased the camera on eBay, I also purchased a 50 millimeter OCT-18 Russian lens here. A little indention right here. See the indention right here? So that will slide in like so, and then you push these guys in, and you can see these latches right here go up, and then it slides right in. So when I first got this lens, there was some issues where there's this focus ring on it right here. Wouldn't budge at all. You see this a lot where these lenses are sold old that the grease gets stuck and they just don't budge. This guy is the power drive. This connects to a battery that I didn't get. I've heard there's ways where you can get the cord and rewire it. I also paid a little bit extra to get a hand crank. Put this on and actually go super old school and just kind of run it like this where it'll give you kind of that eight to 12 frame feel. Now when I purchased this, for some reason I thought it was gonna be a spring drive kind of like the 16 millimeter camera where you wind it and then you just fire it off. Turn it counterclockwise to wind it. For now, we're just gonna deal with the hand crank. There's this pin here right here. This is kind of like a locking mechanism. You can see it's not moving at all. So if you wanted to take the power drive out, you would turn this and it kind of flips outward. Now it's kind of loose. So now if I wanted to take it out, kind of just wiggle it out a little bit. It'll pop off like so. Well, you can see there's indentions here. There's grooves, one, two, three. Pretty simple where we just match it up here. This will turn a little bit here and it locks in. Remember to lock this guy back into place. Push it in and then so now it's not moving, so it's unlocked. Now, as you can see, it's locked. And there's an even an, an animation drive for like stop motion that would just, that would hook onto right here and you would just do one turn at a time if you wanted to do stop motion animation. So obviously there's gonna be some shake if you're gonna film like this, but it works, you know? And as you can see, the frames per second dial is working properly. And this camera will do zero to 32 frames a second. I believe when you move up to the 2M, you have that ability to do higher frame rates. I believe these take 400 foot rolls, closed, open. So obviously to open this guy up, you turn it. And this little indention here is where it fits in the grooves and it sits snugly inside the camera. So we have this latch right here. So it kind of comes out right there. Pop it out and turn it. 
Let me pop the film in, turn it, and it should be locked into place. It's, it's nice because you can store away your film. It doesn't have to sit in the camera. Think of it as when you see this guy up, it's going to slide into the camera if the lens is facing that way. It's going to slide in like this. Pop it open. This is where the film goes, and this is the take-up reel. Now, as you can see, it comes with these little guys here, and obviously these are older designs. And when you get your 35 millimeter film, these guys don't even actually have to come out. Your spool, it'll fit right on top of it. But since I don't have any spare 35 millimeter film to play around with and I don't want to expose it to sunlight, I just cut off about five feet worth of film and I'm just gonna connect it to this guy and use it that way. The first start off with is to give your film kind of a point. I know mine's not the prettiest here. It's gonna help feed the film through. But when you clip off the ends, make sure that the extra little pieces that fall down don't fall into your film magazine and work it into this little slit. You just roll it up. It's gonna go in here, through here, up, down, out, and wrap up around here. So what we're gonna do is take this guy, work it out a little bit, and we're going to thread it through this element here. When you push down and turn them, it advances the film. There's sprocket grabbers in here, so you wanna get it into position and then turn away from you. And you see it's advancing the film. And these guys pop off. You just keep doing that. Maybe somewhere until it goes, maybe wraps around, leave about that much length. Take it up and then loop it back around where the emulsion side is out. It's hard to see, but there's a little slot that it, they'll fit through here. And when you do that, it kind of comes through the top here. You want it to make sure it stays underneath side rails. How it's staying underneath these guys. And then there's this little button right here. That's gonna help advance the film when you get it to this point. And then this guy pops off as well. Keep feeding it. We want a little bit of a loop. So you see about there's about a quarter inch there, so that looks good. So you can close this guy. We're gonna do the same thing where we bring it up through here. So we loop it back around like so. We're gonna push and spin it away from you. And we're gonna do this till we get about a quarter inch gap. You just put this on the take up spool here. And that's always good to just double check, make sure there's nothing not catching. Just make sure that these guys are closed here. We'll put the top back on. There you go, you can see the films right here. Black Sharpie, just to make sure. Let's make a little mark right there. So I kind of made a mistake here. When I put it back in, this thing wasn't completely closed. So it's good I caught that. So we'll try again. There we go. And I'll put it in here. And lock this guy. Run it a little bit. And I could take the cartridge out real quick and notice the black is gone, so we know the film's advancing. Thanks so much for watching part one of this two-part series on working with 35 millimeter film cameras. Now in part two, we're gonna be going over how to use the power drive and how you can actually rig it up to a six volt battery and run it from that where you don't necessarily need to get a specialty Russian cord to power this drive. We're gonna also be getting into some really interesting lens hacks where you can take older Pentax lenses, take certain glass elements out of those and make lenses that will actually fit this Oct 18 mount where you won't have to spend the, the inflated prices of these older lenses. And if you guys haven't checked out our other film episodes, all that information really cross-pollinates. So thanks again for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already. We will see you next time. Later.